Thank you for tuning in to CW Hip Hop's live podcast. I'm your host, DJ Bank. Co-host here, I got Prism and Garky with yo, me. Yo, yo. What's going, What's going on? on? We also got a guest in the studio. We have Wyman out of Milwaukee. He's here for his interview. Why don't you go ahead and say hi. How's it going? All right, you guys can He's follow us. He's very casual with it. I, <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted more on the end there, but yeah. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CW Hip Hop. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at BBNC9 to 5. Garky, where can the listener find you at? You can find me on Instagram at Garky Gaines, G A R K E G A I N Z, and pretty much any other platform I just Garky Prism. Where can the listener find you? You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Prism Rap, P R I Z M R A P. And what about you, Wyman? Find me on Instagram at YMN.MKE. Is that your only social media? I do have a Facebook. It is YMN999. Okay, so Instagram is Instagram like your use. main one? Instagram is my main one. Okay. I'm using for most of my marketing at the moment. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I got Facebook if you want to give me the like. Yo, Jay. Uh, make sure you go give him a follow. We're going to be getting on, into Jace? who What's he is, on, uh, why so you should so give so. him a follow, a lot of his music. Uh, I know you've been making music for a couple years now, so you got kind of a discography going. Uh, we're going to be getting into all of that, but we did ask a question on our Instagram yep. live here. So we had, if you could have a documentary for any artist, what artist would you pick? So if you guys want to join in on the answer here, make sure you join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on the IGTV, CW Hip Hop, to get your answer here. But we got a bunch of them from the comments this week. What do we got there, Garthy? Uh JD said that Logic would be the most deserving for a, for a documentary. Sterling MKE said Tribe Called Quest. Sour55 says Yay, so Kanye. That's uh, all good answers so far. X Vibe says Lil Wayne. I agree with that as well. I feel like he's already probably got a documentary, but I, I guess I he does not I haven't heard. I mean, yeah, yeah, why not? He's he's been in the game how long? AKA Entertainment says D Bass, which is a Wisconsin artist. Mm -hmm. So he's just giving tribute to the homie. Um, I would say Jack Harlow. That's, Jack Harlow. That, that would be my answer. That's for sure. I'm gonna go with Fifty Cent. I think he's been in the game long enough that he's done quite a bit. He's had a lot of beef, started a lot of projects, and I think his story is influential to hip-hop that I'd be curious what the documentary pulls out. What do you got, Prism? What's your answer? Uh, I got Kendrick just because of his influence on the game, and like I also want to learn more about his younger years and like his come up on everything, in fact, just how he started and just more than what you can just get from his music. So Yeah, it's a good answer. All right, man, what's your, your answer here? Um, I'd probably either go with Scarlord or Ski Mask, to be honest. Uh, Scarlord from the UK, I don't really know his story. Um, heavier rap, he always used to wear a mask, so I'm um, kind of interested in what that's all about, and yeah. his backstory. And Ski Mask just got a lot of Florida ties, and a lot of big names know him, so it's tied to X, it's tied to Juice, I want to know about what he's going through gotcha. and all that. Yeah. Yeah. No, those are two good answers. A lot of, yeah. a lot of you guys had good answers. And you did just show us a Scar Lord song. I did, yeah, I did, and it, it was, was with Ghost Man. It, it was, hits. It, it's a hard it's song. very good. That, you were saying you, you lift to that song. I do, I are. lift and I work out to that song and I look like just a Just that one <laughs> only? Like you just have just that, that one on the repeat? I, I have it on every workout playlist I own. Okay. <laughs> I have I, you own them? Damn. No, yeah, I'm actually... <laughs> no, uh, JS actually also says YMW or YNW Mel Melly. That's a good oh, one. Yep, yep. That's oh, yeah. Oh, I don't think he's got I a good story. Have I heard? Very interesting. He was, was he the one who made like a song on the run? His yeah, he made um, Murder on My Murder Mind. Murder on My Mind. Oh, he made Murder. So, oh. yeah, because his whole, his whole story was a split personality thing. In oh, really? his case, yeah. So, okay. his, his Murder on My Mind um, oh. is made by his split personality that committed the murder, whereas Mind on My Murder is, and you can really like hear the difference, I think that one sounds sad as hell, but um, you can hear like him in that one, I guess. I'm getting schooled up in here right now. Yeah, I'm I've, I've <laughs> never heard that before. You haven't heard that before? I know he had that split personality. Oh, I'm telling actually. you, that, wow. that's the whole thing with the courts and the whole thing with the papers, and that's this whole thing okay. why it's not like that's a good Sheesh. answer. That's a, that's a answer. I like that answer more than any answer now, to be honest with you. JS, thank you for bringing that up, bro. Uh, if you guys do want to join us here on the uh, IGTV, you can uh, ask questions for YMN or any of our interviews uh, that we have here. So get in there and uh, get your questions lined up, but we do have a ton of them. Uh, we're going to get right into those questions, but real quick here, new music in Wisconsin hip-hop. want to make sure we mention Go these. ahead and mention the new music, BBNC. We do it. I know you can sure, do it anyways. There's a lot of projects that are coming out here. There is a lot of projects. Billy sure. has a project coming out, Renaissance Love, 1437, February 12th. Nasa Lamote has a song, Where You At, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Spell Red has Heartbreak Real Estate EP coming out February 14th. I Love You Truly has Prince coming out Valentine's Day as well. And then Prism has his project, Dead Memories, coming out February 18th. Yes, sir. Yep. And Azzy Lay has a, I forget what it's called, but Leon, Leonie or something. It's, it's a weird, like, I don't know if it's Latin or something like that, okay. but it's like a weird name. Um, coming out uh, February 22nd. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, February's got a lot of good music coming out from the Wisconsin hip-hop scene, so make yes. sure you guys check all that Tons out. Tons in February. Bunch That's of music crazy. released last week. We're kind of making a shorter list, so, I mean, you go back to check ones. But you also started a graphic, which I yep. like, so new music. We're going to start that up. Check us out on CW Hip Hop, so you get the new music every every uh, week here. All right. You ready for, for the interview? Are we ready? I think we're ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? ready. All right. He's ready, everybody. So right off the bat, I just want to welcome you to the CW Hip Hop Studio. Nice to be here. Yes, I did already, but I mean, of course, I'm going to welcome you again. Uh, we're happy to have you here. How was the drive from Milwaukee? It was long, but uh, weather wasn't bad, so can't complain. Yeah, I mean, BBNC had me all scared. He was texting me, oh, there's going to be Listen, snow. Man. Yeah, and then I got you that DM, and it was like, yo, bro, we could reschedule if you really need to. And I was like, I Like, if it needed to, yeah. Like, I just, like, I, I don't, like, I don't, I don't mind driving in snow. As okay, long as okay. But there was no snow, so yes. it's fine. It was perfect. It it's worked fine. out perfect. I mean, you live in Wisconsin, you gotta drive. To you gotta expect this. Well, the thing you was, know what, that is true. I was driving. Snow was melting, and it was supposed to like drop temperatures. I was like, oh, yeah, it's gonna be ice. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I didn't yeah, want to put you. No, on you're looking road. out for me. I of course, that. yeah. We can always reschedule, but I'm glad you're able to make it. Oh, yeah. Yes, very, very, very glad. Uh, so you just released. You did just release your your newest single, Devil Girl, uh, February second. And don't worry, we're gonna talk about it more in the interview. Uh, but just, just tell the listener what the, what the song's about. Devil Girl is about um, a, well, I mean, just by listening, you can kind of tell what it's about, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think it's just like a feeling that, I guess, whenever I like go through something or whenever I get like a super bad feeling, I usually end up writing lyrics, and whenever I'm at a low point, I write lyrics, because that's just kind of how my mind works, that's how I cope, um, and I've been doing that most of my life. But um, that song specifically was just sort of meant to portray that feeling, um, I guess, when you're kind of cheated on and when you're kind of like thrown under the bus I guess um, okay there's not much there's not much more to it but like simple and straight feelings, to the point. Yeah. it's simple and straight to the point but it's feelings that I wanted everyone to be able to relate to like if you've been through something then like that's the only way you're going to connect to like what I'm saying like what I'm putting on track of course definitely yeah, yeah. Definitely. uh so how did you come up with the name YMN YMN was well, it originate from it originates actually from my real name Okay. So, okay. Um, most people have like a stage name that's completely different from their real name, and like that's fine. Like you divide your personal life and your professional life, and like that's probably safer. But um, with like artists that I followed and like artists that I was really big on, their whole thing was always like connecting with their personal life and connecting with the fans. And I think that's like the biggest thing is like connecting with an audience who's gonna actually be there and be loyal. It's not just someone who's gonna be like, oh, let me just see this. I know this guy. Like listen to this I've seen this before you mm -hmm. know it's like getting loyal people to follow you but um is it just your initials then it's it's so it's well you don't have to say your full name if you don't no want to no, no no I'm, I'm fine so my name is derived from uh Yaman and okay. Yaman uh was the name given to me and I thought the meaning was already pretty dope so I just didn't want to change it because it translates in Arabic um to like a blessing from God Okay. So oh, okay. I was like, I was like, it's a pretty good name. Yeah. Um, so I changed it a little bit. I wanted to give it more brandability, um, and I wanted to make it more like easy in the rap scene, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, just why I'm in, I think that that works just fine. Yeah. And I want it to be you, simple. You can make easy like a dope logo out of it or some shit too. Exactly. Just three letters. Exactly. Yeah, that works great. I, I like that you have a backstory to it. Mm -hmm. Or at least it goes to your name because I mean mine mine definitely stems off my last name as well so yeah. I just like spell it differently. Yeah, you gotta be connected. Yeah, to some people exactly. though use uh, random name generators. I mean, yeah, I, I have those seen that, and you know what? I'm not gonna lie. When I was um, when I was first like looking around and I was really sitting there thinking, I went through so many names and you I was writing think down hard about it, them. Man. It took so much time just and like and eventually when I landed on this name, I wasn't even sure if it was gonna stick. And then after a little bit, I was like, yeah, this is gonna stick. You just so, know you got that yeah, gut feeling. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. just like this is good. I understand that. I, I definitely feel you on that. So, how long ago did you start making music, and what inspired you to start? So, I actually started writing when I was like fourteen, probably um, thirteen, something like that. Were you writing hip hop or? No, actually, that's the thing is, um, I never crossed over into the rap scene until I heard the song King by X. Okay. Um, okay. And the whole reason I don't know if you guys have heard that song. King. I, I think I've heard it before. Yeah. I, I, I oh, follow just, X like closely. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's not much of a rap song, but the fact that someone showed it to me and I was like, a rapper made this, and it was like, <clears throat> it was everything I was listening to at the point because at that point I had grown up on rock, um, and um, 
I hadn't even like crossed over into rap. I didn't think rap was like that good. And there was like <laughs> there was like a few people. I was, I was like, eh, yeah, they're all right. Too. But my whole thing was like shredding guitars and like people screaming and like raw emotion. Like I was that's where I was at. After I heard that one single by X, I started diving real deep into like the Florida underground scene. Well, that makes um, sense. I started yeah, and that's why I was telling you earlier that like I'm super into Florida rap a lot. I got I think you. That's why. It's because I found that one person. I started following all those other people off of him. Florida's kind of got a scene that's been influencing hip hop quite a bit. So I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. And I might have to look into it a little deeper too, because yeah, I didn't think about it, but yeah, you mentioned yeah. it like the last couple of big artists that have come out of there from Florida. Yeah. Yeah, but I I was like writing and um, always writing lyrics growing up, and like I'd be in high school and I'd just be like, I'd have some free time. I'd sit on the bench. I'd be sitting there like writing in like a yellow like notebook. And like so, if anyone ever like saw me like just sitting in the hallway, that's what I was doing. Um, but <laughs> I'd sit out there and I'd just write stuff like randomly just sitting in the hallway and it wasn't until X actually got shot and I got out of high school where I was like I kind of really want to do this like professionally and I kind of want to start putting out stuff um, and that's when I was like yeah this is my thing so okay. after that I was kind of like sold on making connections and like trying to grow closer to producers and other artists um, I guess kind of off off questions here. What what were some of your tactics with reaching out to people in the beginning? Like, do you have any connections, or are you just completely cold starting? You know, I could. So I was I was always making music, and I was releasing a little here and there on SoundCloud, but it wasn't until um, I first ran into my friend who he doesn't go to Marquette anymore, but he used to go to Marquette with me, and once he sort of like heard some of my stuff on SoundCloud, he actually hit me up. And okay. I, didn't know, I didn't know who he was. He, I knew him through, like, a friend. And he was like, hey, man, like, we should work together. You should, like, start professionally, like, releasing your stuff. Like, like you have the potential. And, like, and, and I don't think if he believed me at that point, I don't think I would have started so, like, drastically. I might have, like, inched my way up to it. But I didn't, I, that was definitely, like, a, like, a boost for me. It was having a producer there who was like, hey, man, like, let's work. Like, let's do this. And, like, having someone to go through with that stuff, like, Helps ten times. I think that's why you see these like duos. You see like X and Ski. You see like yeah, and Tracy. You facts. see like <clears throat> all these people. It's 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 a lonely road, especially at the start because you're doing everything yourself. But if you got someone there kind of edging you on, that's like yeah, that means the world. I know. Thinking I'm back God. to like some older hip hop time, like it was you weren't a rapper until you found a producer. That's like, it. That was just and how it. it was. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's and, and and I'm telling you like the search for a producer never stops. You're gonna meet producers you like, but like I'm always looking for people who are like on that next level, and I've. I started, I worked with people who were like, I can say it now because I was shitty then too, like who were pretty shitty at that point, and they're all probably better now, but like, you work with your level as you move up, and like I've gotten to a point where I'm finding my sound and I found it very well, and I know who I have to start working with and who I should. Yeah, yeah, okay. I agree with that, you've okay. definitely been really growing into your sound, I'm enjoying to see the progress so far, Facts. where you're going to keep going then. Um, so we were kind of talking about this when you first got here. Do you uh, have your on repeat or tied to? He didn't send it to me, so he... I sent it to. Oh, he sent it to Mason. Yeah. Oh, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Mason's got. All right. The on -repeat so uh, with your on repeat playlist, what are your top five Spotify songs? Spotify on repeat. Yeah, oh, Spotify. Top, uh, my top five. Yeah. What are the top five on repeat right now? Recently. Yeah, the ones that are on your repeat. Top, All right, so I got uh, Isis with Logic and Joyner Lucas. Mm, dude, good such song. a good <laughs> song. Okay, that's a good <laughs> start. Good start. Um, I got CBD by Breakins. Okay. Know who that is Breakins is pretty no. pretty good. Um, I got oh actually that was the third one. Well here I'll just do four. Um, I have Go to Hell by Quentin Kane. I don't know if you know that. I know. No. no. So, it sounds like a president on the beat. <laughs> Clinton <laughs> Kane. It yeah, does. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Honestly, I saw the name and I was like, mm, but then I heard the song and he was like, Go to Hell, and I was like, Yeah. I resonate with it, yeah. yeah man. And obviously, Devil Girl's on there too, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, you got your own. Yeah, I got my own. That's you know, that's and, and that's the thing, like, like, no, you do. Because even yes. like Lil Wayne, up until X died, he actually didn't listen to Island because of X. But he didn't listen to anyone else's music. He didn't know who X was until he died. And he, he said, he said, I only listen to my own music. <laughs> Damn. And that's and that's like <laughs> okay, <laughs> like all right, sure, dude. Like you got your own life, like <laughs> fucking like motto or what's it called, like uh, your Enjoy own life. In my in my eyes, I'm that's not the word I was talking about. No, I love Naruto. <laughs> I love him. I like bring that up. But no, he's got like his um, theme song, I guess, which is oh. his own. Oh, I got that's you. Okay, okay, that's what you're looking for. Got you. 
I because I could have that could have gone a different ways with what you were going. No, with no, I, could, I, I was gonna see say, where you're uh, going with you that. You mentioned he only listened to his stuff. I remember hearing uh, uh, he was thinking that Twenty One Savage was a group of Twenty One people. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> really? I love no, saying no, he way, hears way, these names, yeah. and I always hear these reactions to like what he says to hearing these names, yeah. and they're always like priceless. Yeah, that's hilarious. Because hilarious. he doesn't know who anyone is. No, Jesus Christ. Of course he does. Well, I mean. He's always so worried about what dad joke he's going to use next. In, in and I respect yeah. And I respect <laughs> it. I deliver on these. <laughs> so what are, uh, what is an artist or a couple artists that are your biggest influences? Which, one, which ones would you categorize as something that you know, influenced you the most and you know, made you the artist that you are today? Um, definitely, definitely X, as I already said. Um, I'm, I'm gonna probably almost always say that that's my top artist, um, no matter what. So you said you listened to, like, some outside of hip-hop. What are some of those influences you like? Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are pretty big influences as well. Um, so, growing up, I'd listen to, and I still blast it once in a while, um, Pierce the Veil is really huge mm-hmm. for me. Oh, uh, I used to listen to Pierce the Veil. Pierce the Veil is pretty sick. Um, I, I really, through high school, I was really had it. I'm listening to My Chemical Romance. Okay. okay. Um. A lot of screaming shit. Um, I, Teenagers I went is my to favorite warped, song. Yeah, I went. Yeah, it's a good song. <laughs> I went to I went to Warped like four years in a row with all the rock bands. Oh really? Stuff. Yeah, the last four years they did it because they weren't doing it after a while. Um, but I think, um, but I've been like fucking with these people who are like kind of edging into the rap scene, but they're still mostly rock, like Swaco and Trippy Red. Mm-hmm. Heard like their yep. stuff. Okay. Like I've been listening to a few of his songs. Um, Any Lincoln Park? Like, I love Lincoln Park. Park. I can't over. tell you how sad I was when I heard what happened to Chester. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, no, I grew up on Lincoln Park as well, so 2000s rock, that's all me. Okay. Um, anything else that's in, like, the emo or screaming, punk rock, I'll probably enjoy it. I probably have heard it. Gotcha. Because um, that's what I grew up on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So do you have any, like, uh, do you have, like, a team or friends that you, like, work with all the time that you make with? What, what's what's the group? Um, so I have, <clears throat> it's mostly just me on, like, the making, I'm making, like, lyrics and, like, songwriting stuff and adding stuff, but as far as like um, mixing and like producing goes, um, I mentioned my friend that I met at Marquette, who's Essence, <coughs> um, and he he was the one who got me into the rap scene a little more, but um, he's pretty big and he's he's the one who first like was like, like I'll do all your mixing, don't even worry about it, like just like make music with me. Yeah. He just wanted he wanted somebody to be able to do something. Like <coughs> yeah. <that>. And, <coughs> And like I said, he was like first one I think to like really get me into rap, like rap scene and start making music more like competitively. Um, and then the other one was um, a friend of a friend who his name is Capricio. Okay. Um, his mixing is what you're hearing on like Quest, oh, two or okay. three songs. Um, and I found like I work pretty well with him, and he does a lot of. Um, it's not, like you can work with producers and you can tell them like, hey, can you master this? And like, they'll help you like sound a little like crispy for a lack of like other words. Okay, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> and it'll sound good. But uh, like, he also does stuff that like I can be like, hey, I want this effect and this on this, and like I can like say something directly and he'll do it. And then the other cool thing with him is like he can tell me what he thinks and what mm. he thinks would sound cool, and he'll actually add to it. It's not just here, give me your stuff, let me match this and get it out to you as quick as possible. It's, hey, bro, let's work on this and, like, let's make it as good as possible so, like, it fucking That's like, the best to have, yeah. And if you don't have that, you're not gonna get any better, so. Exactly. It's really exactly. nice to yeah, to bounce off Two heads are better than one. Yeah, two no, heads, that's what I was I'm gonna saying, say, two heads are better than one. It's so true. So what, uh, what kind of passions do you have outside of music? Other than outside of camel riding. Camel. <laughs> which, we'll, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> <in the interview. laughs> um... The, <laughs> You're making me want to talk about it now. So nah, 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 <laughs> um, All right, so my passion's outside. I, I'm pretty big yeah. on, like, working out. Um, obviously, I think, like, bettering yourself and, like, everything that you're doing at the moment is very important to your music as well. So I think, like, if you're working on yourself and being, like, a better person, your music's going to sound better as well because you're channeling your emotions and stuff. That, men- well. yeah, that exactly. mental health thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. like, lifting, working out is really big for me. Um, I really like video games. Um, what kind of video games yeah, are you playing? Are you playing? playing everything. We all play every video game. Oh, you got the Battlefield 2042 now? <laughs> nah, that's <laughs> so garbage. <laughs> the, uh, I play a, like a shit ton of stuff on Xbox. Um, otherwise, I play like PC Master Race. Sometimes I'll play like League once in a while. Okay, okay. Um, TFT stuff like that. I have a VR headset. Have not been on it in a while. Okay. Not 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 visiting the metaverse anymore. Yeah, no, I actually <laughs> haven't. I don't know if I want to give those rights. 
I'm kind of scared of Mark Zuckerberg. So. Yeah, I would be too. Yeah, though. I don't, don't want to worry. see my digital world in front of my face. So. <laughs> Just the things that they can do with VR is kind it's of insane. insane. It's crazy now. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Um, if you could headline a concert tonight and you could pick three artists to open up for you, who would you want to pick and why? To open up for me? To open for you're the headliner and you're getting getting to op uh, pick your openers. Yeah, you get to pick three openers. You're headlining. Next. These gotta be local people. Be nope. Anybody, anybody, anybody you want. Anyone. Okay. Well, alive. Let's yeah, say alive. alive. I think that's a good base. Alive. Yeah. Alive. Yeah. Okay. Um. Man. I'm gonna go with. I really like Wi-Fi's funeral out of the underground for the scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, definitely listen to his stuff if you have it. Um, otherwise, why does he want? Why does he want Wi-Fi dead? I don't know. I, I don't know if I don't know if, it, I don't I know like if it's Wi -Fi. I don't know if it's his funeral or if it's like supposed to be edgy like or I don't know. Home it's a cool. Like, I, 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 <laughs> take it, I take it as a killjoy name. I actually take it from like the rock stuff. Oh, rock bands have okay. killjoy names. I took that as like a killjoy name. You okay. take something that has nothing to do with death and destruction, and you just add something about death and destruction at the end of it. <laughs> I got you. Chemical romance, like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Say like. I got you. I guess just going off of what you said with the, you know, the funeral home has Wi-Fi, imagine that's like the first thing, you, you come to a funeral and that's the first thing you ask, you walk in the door, hey, wi what's the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that, that would be really okay. bad. So you got one there, <laughs> who are your other two? Um, I'm going to go with, um, man, I've been, I've been vibing with Ian Dior lately. Oh, Ooh. Ian Dior, I love Ian Dior. The last album was pretty good. Yes, um, yes it was. And then... Now you're picking to tie those all together. I think Dro Kenji. Dro Kenji, okay. Have you guys heard Dro Kenji? I feel like I've heard the word Kenji before. Dro, Dro Kenji is a very great artist. Um, he's newer. Um, I think his song like Cupid, and he just made a song Finders Keepers. It was popping off pretty okay. hard. That's sure what I might have to check out Finders Keepers. Yeah, it's pretty good. New album, <laughs> new album smacks. Definitely check it out. Okay. That was, so those are your three openers then? What yeah, were they again? Three. Uh, so Dro Kenji, uh, Wi Fi's Funeral, and. Uh, Ian Dior. Ian Dior. Dior, yes. That'd be a good show. That'd be too. interesting, I'd yeah. Buy that'd be really show. I'd be down. I mean, why am I in something? Yeah, Headlining, course, yeah. why would I not buy tickets to that show? Yeah, either way. Uh, right, of course. So, to my knowledge, the first song you ever released was on SoundCloud, March 4th, 2018, called Kick Your Shoes Off and Run, which is like an acoustic song. Was there anything before this? There was, I mean, with every artist, there's a lot of stuff we delete. Uh, <laughs> And obviously, I get to points where I go back and I delete a lot of stuff. I'm still not done. I probably will still do that, but um, listen that, while you can. Yeah, <laughs> listen while you can. Get it. Um, but that song itself was um, just an acoustic song, and everything before that was probably either electric or acoustic as well. Um, the first rap song I released was called Split Ends, actually, and I don't think you can actually see that on the SoundCloud discography because it was part of that first album. Oh, but you that, definitely that's can. the first oh, rap that's song. Oh, that's the first rap that's song. That's the first Got rap you. song. Okay. It's on that album. Got you. Uh, Victimize. Um, but, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> then in the same year, 2018, you posted another two songs, Winter, April 12th, uh, which is also kind of an acoustic, and then Pure Blood, April 13th, which you use an electric guitar for. On these two tracks, including Kick Your Shoes Off, so on the three tracks, the name starts with Seance, or Seance? Seance. Seance. Uh, what does that mean in these songs? Does it, is it like a short project that you did with these three songs, or what, what, is, what was that for? No, actually, we, we talked about this. I was actually, that was one of the points in my life where I was trying to go through names. I was trying to think about what I wanted, ah. and that was actually one of the names where I was like, maybe? So I put it on there, and it was gotcha. just Seance, and I was like, after a while, I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of the name changes. Well, that's good to know. At least, no, it, they said, was this a typo or is uh, pure what? blood P E E R as opposed to pure blood? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess uh, no, it's yeah, it's like pure. Like okay, yeah. Um, I'm so sure. I guess uh, that just caught my attention. I guess yeah. Some of his names do that. Like he's got one where it's Good Morning, but it's Morning like the dead, morning like, like Morning the Dead. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got some. He's got some weird. Well, not weird, but good. Good Better like days. Yeah, what, what do you call it? Like wordplay. I guess yeah, you say yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, so just you, you, you just okay, wait. You'll yeah. see more. I'm sorry. I went through your Spotify. <laughs> uh, I oh, did I get the nice deep in SoundCloud was tied in, but so I guess. Uh, and then you went into making your first album, Victimized, January twelfth, twenty nineteen, which was released on all platforms. This project included eight tracks: Obsessed with the Next North Star, Driving Anxieties, Good Morning, Sickle Love, Split Ends, Motivation Hurts, Scapegoat, and Over Weather. Right? Yeah. Uh, what inspired this project? And I, I think I, just listening through it, I guess, is it like, I just have another question, is it a little Pete tribute? 
Yeah, actually, I was about to say it's okay. a XAM Peep tribute and, and, and X. driving okay. and okay. driving anxiety. If you listen to driving anxiety, so that that, was, that gave it away. That to was me. the song. Yes. that was the song that was like, all right, let's just make an album. Because there was like a like a news audio in there that was talking about yep, Lil Peep stuff that Lil you had Man X. Yeah, yeah okay, if you okay. listen real close in the background, um, and I think that for me, driving anxieties was like. Split Ends, I was always like, yeah, it's a good flow, like, for my first rap song, whatever. But Driving Anxieties was also kind of like, oh, this is kind of just, like, cool and, like, it's more alternative. And, like, no, I, I was, yeah, I really liked it. And I was like, yeah, I like this. Like, I want to make music. <laughs> I will say, uh, Obsessed with Northstar, I heard that one. I like the kind of poetry element you have to it. Like, yeah, yeah I was you start really... a couple of your songs like that all the time. It's nice. Yeah, there's, I, I definitely just fuck with versatility overall. And, like, I think that being able to, like, practice on everything and just do everything is really, you know, like, pay one day because like eventually people fall off from artists because it just all sounds the same it does yeah and that was one thing with uh that track it was it caught my attention i was like this is a little bit different it's straight poetry over the beat um but it, like the, the way you were saying it like it was great poetry with how you tied it all together i would definitely say keep doing things like that uh with that style because i i, I really it. like it really set me to like want to go listen to the rest of my project because it was the first track right yeah yeah so i was like okay what else is in here like it really captivated me yeah awesome and especially when you do it um do that little poetry but it's like the verse that's coming up and you're you know what i mean i, I forget which song it was but it was one of, i think it was one from that uh that album where you did the poetry in the beginning and then it, the verse was kind of what you were saying at the same time so i, I really i really like that what was your favorite song i guess you, you're probably going to say driving anxiety but what was your favorite song off that first album When I look back at it, I feel like I should say Split Ends, because for a first rap song, it was pretty decent, in my opinion, from like other people's first rap songs I've heard. But Driving yeah. Anxiety itself, just like, I think that was one of the first songs where people actually reached out to me and was like, hey man, it sounds really good, like you doing that. So Hell yeah. like that, that song also is like a pretty special place in my heart. Okay. Uh, so, I think we were, we kind of we kind of already touched on this. Um, what kind of music did you listen to as a kid? And I think you said rock music. Did it help you, inspire you? It did. Like on this journey, like to make it music, did. like um, for your sound. The reason, game? yeah, the reason I, and I always say like the reason I like rock music so much is because to me rock, rap is like it's rhymes and it's like a flow and it's like great. But with rock music, it's just like say whatever the fuck you want and like mm. put your fucking heart into it. So it's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a lot of a lot of what I listen to is like based off of that and like because of that, I I get the rhythm and flow because I like rap, but I also have these like emotional like raw elements that are kind of like come from rock and like my roots okay i get yeah, I, I used to listen to rock all the time too yeah part. yeah mm -hmm. it definitely has that that element to it of definitely core emotion music. in the the rawness of it um we kind of already touched on this next one too uh but who is essence to you and you know because he produces he or she i don't know who essence is uh produced a ton of your songs i saw it on soundcloud uh and you know what's the story with you guys it's, yeah, he was he was the first person I was saying like uh, that pushed me into like making music more seriously. Yep. He was the one who like saw my potential eventually, and he was like, "Hey, like let's actually do something, and I'll help you out." And like we were saying, like it helps when you got someone there. So like I think that was the initial push that I really needed, or it was like, um, yeah. But he was he was pretty like instrumental in like me starting to make music. So hell yeah, that's who he is. Shout out to Essence. Yeah, shout out to Essence, one of the best producers in the game. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Now, what did uh, your first setup uh, look like? Were you using all this, his equipment, or did you guys buy stuff together? Like, what was the DAW, the mic, uh, uh, so was the room? Can I give us some? Yeah, yeah. yeah How big was the closet? <laughs> <laughs> so when I first started making music, I didn't, I wasn't even in a closet. I wasn't doing like jack shit to like isolate anything. I wasn't doing like mm -hmm. anything to even like even just mastering wasn't that great, and there wasn't that much put into it. Um, but I was just using like, um, I don't even remember what the mic is. It was like, <laughs> was it like USB or did you have like, 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 yeah, a like a USB. It was like a oh. shitty like fifty, sixty dollar mic off of Amazon or something. Like I don't even know. Okay. Um, was it a after, gaming headset at all? No. Okay. That's all. <laughs> yeah, that actually, hold on. Oh, I I went through that. I went through yeah. that. You're, no, yeah, we have similar upbringings. I, mean, I, also, <laughs> oh, okay. I also used a video game headset for a little bit. Do you know what kind of headset it was? It was a One Ear Turtle Beach. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's so funny. Uh, yeah, but what was I saying? Uh, um, what kind of dog? Right? Yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah, and I was, um, but after that I got a Blue Yeti. Oh, okay. um, and then I, a lot of times I'll record like at my uh, friend's studio, uh, which he has like in his basement. Um, so you got some stuff set up over there, otherwise I just use my Blue Yeti and everything else. I mean, Blue Yeti gets it done. Blue Yeti gets it done, man. Yeah. For real. And, uh, for the first, do you use Audacity? 
I used Audacity. The first thing I ever downloaded when I wanted to make music was Audacity. I downloaded it. I said I hate this shit. I uninstalled it and I bought Logic Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Did you buy it like, right away? You were just like, yeah, I, yeah. Balls, I was right? like, this is terrible. I was like, I'm yeah, buying Logic. Hey, hey, you know yeah. what? Hesitation. That's not. A, you know, I'm glad you didn't hesitate. I was like, I want to do this. I was like, I'm gonna put some money into it. So I got it. I was like, it's an investment at that yeah, point. Yeah, it's, it's probably something you use in every song. So I mean, it's worth the investment. Exactly. Of Facts. Probably. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, sure he uses his DAW in every song. <laughs> <laughs> just over the mic, you know. He just gets balls. <laughs> yeah. <in the> <laughs> I'll mix it later. Uh, yeah, right. On March 16th, 2019, you then went to post your second album in the same year called Sold My Perception with nine tracks. I Say, I Candy, Watch Yourself Freestyle, Handicap, uh, Not In My Hands, Beverly Hills, Karma, Tainted Angel, uh, and Cynical. What inspired this project to come about? I think that during that album, I was going through like a very spiritual time and I was like meditating a lot. I was doing a lot of my life where I was sort of realizing um, the steps I needed to take and I was kind of like kind of finding myself almost and like okay. doing what I want to do. Um, and I think that album just sort of came about in my head and I was sort of thinking about how the whole time I was making I was thinking about how much I really really want to do that the rest of my life. And that, at that point I was, I was meditating on manifestation. I was meditating on like you know like envisioning and like all that everything everything yeah. I did everything but <laughs> like just during that period I wrote that album I worked on it with uh, Essence mostly um, and I think it was just sort of like me selling my perception um, that I had before making that and just sort of viewing it as impossible okay you know? okay and now I get the name a little bit more I like yeah that. yeah it's like more that. about my perception okay there we go I like that hell yeah that's a good uh you, know, you found yourself did, is that when you kind of found your sound maybe too it's when I started experimenting more. Experimenting? Like okay, okay. More. Uh, first two albums to me are like completely like completely experimental. Um, of course. It's me just finding my noise and yeah, my yeah. sound. Yeah, um, of course. Which I've gotten a lot closer to now. So like, they're still very important. Definitely. Uh, so Handicap sticks with me the most out of this, out of this, uh, the album. Mostly just because of the quote in the beginning. Just because people aren't reciprocating what you're doing, that isn't a reason to stop. And I couldn't set, couldn't set it better myself. I really, I really like that quote. Um, what song off the album do you suggest listen or go hear right away? I'm gonna go with um, either Beverly Hills or Watch Yourself Freestyle. Okay. Um, Watch Yourself Freestyle goes pretty hard. There's like some Suicide Boy undertones almost because mm -hmm. of my friend who's on it. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty good. Otherwise, Beverly Hills. Um, I wrote that track, but I was not expecting to spit that hard. So I, I, <laughs> I was, not, <laughs> expecting I was not expecting to put some dark shit into there and just sort of. But it worked out. It was a pretty good track. I'm glad it worked out. It was a good. It was a great track. Dude. Thank you. Do you have any uh, like stories or memories from when you were making the project? Uh, anything that kind of like as you listen back, you're like, oh, this this like, kind of pops the process, back. Process like something happened or. Um, I remember I was like, I guess this is this goes with like the way I am. Um, that other song I have, um, I was like chilling on Instagram or whatever, and I followed this guy from Milwaukee at like 50k followers. I think he's in like Florida now, but um, his name was like MDG Viper. And he hit me up on Instagram, and he was like, yo, bro, like, where you at? And I was like, Milwaukee. He was like, let's, let's, like, book some studio time. Let's make something. And I was like, all right. I was like, dude's got followers. Dude's got, like, yeah. some traction, I guess. Let's, like, do something. So I, like, meet up with him or whatever, and I, I've never met this guy in my life. And he was, like, 30 minutes late. And oh, <laughs> of course he was. And, and, like, he hopped in my car. And, um, and basically, uh, we drove over to the studio or whatever and we stand outside trying to like find it for like because this was just when we were renting and like I don't remember it was. it was like almost downtown but like not quite downtown so um it wasn't in a bad area but we we're just walking around the street and i was like all right well i don't know what i'm doing here um and then we go and we record and the whole time it's like this older dude um was kind of like i felt judged almost so okay. You got like this. Okay. You got this like this African American. You got this like Palestinian in the studio, mm -hmm. and then you got this older like some white guy or something. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> and I was like, and, and not, yeah, no disrespect. Like his studio is nice, but like we used it and stuff. And then um, basically we left, and he wanted to like pick up Bud or whatever. And I was like, sure, I can like drive you to get some or whatever. And he got his stuff, and dude just like puts it right in his pocket, nothing on it. And I'm like. Loud as fuck. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's fucking loud as fuck. And um, he's he's like asking me if I want to like like 
chill with him and stuff, and I'm just like, no, I got stuff to do, and like, I'm, I'm low-key, like, till this day, I think he's very salty that I didn't want to smoke weed with him. Oh, no. I think he's very Damn. salty. That's because like he, the Pineapple Express, uh, the movie Pineapple <laughs> oh, Express, when he yeah. doesn't want to stick around and smoke <laughs> with him. Yeah, and it was just like, yeah, but I, after that, I didn't really, like, hear from him at all, so I was kind of like... He might have been salty. I, that's why I think he was salty, because I never heard from him after that. Did the song ever Did you, you ever reach out to him? Out? I guess that's no. 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 <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. I kind of, I kind of like do my work, and I, if I'm not connecting with you on like personal level, then I'll probably just like, I won't talk to you much after we're together. But don't get me wrong, like I have people who I've worked with that like I'm still friends with, and like I talk to them on like a weekly basis or whatever. Yeah. But um, music's better when I fuck with you on a personal level. Yeah, like, when you, uh, when you can connect on it, you just hit that same vibe. Yeah. Hundred percent. The vibe has to be right. Uh, so have you ever performed before? Um, yeah, actually, I've uh, performed at um, the Miramar. Um, oh, oh, okay. For a little bit, um, and then I did like a contest there as well for okay. like uh, like a showcase tour kind of. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that was decent. That was like my first time on stage. Um, Nerve wracking, but also like eye opening. Yeah. Uh, after you start talking after like five minutes, that's when like I feel like I chill out. But obviously, as that happens more, I'm just going to get more and more used to it. Of course. Yeah. You know, you know. yeah, of course. You'll get used to it the more you do it. <laughs> um, did you, do you, like, is there any, how was that experience at the Miramar? Did you, who, who were you, like, opening for, or what was? Were you headlining? Yeah, was, was Wyman headlining? No, I no. wasn't headlining. I was opening. Um, I honestly don't even remember. Damn, but, I do, okay. but I do remember um, on the showcase tour, it was, like, um, what was it? Maybe like 20 or like 30 artists just going off and back and and I think the big thing with like a lot and I, and I almost won but um, but like the big thing was uh, a lot of the artists that were performing were playing their tracks like their um, like their actual full track in the Ooh, background while okay. they're performing okay. so you got the vocals and everything going on that's and normally how they well, do I know it. I know okay. but for the sake of like a contest they wanted like um, just the, like you know, just like just, okay, just, just beat? yeah, just okay. the instrumental beat, and then you're doing everything on the microphone. So okay. I think a lot of people got knocked out because they were just sort of like not trying not really that hard, and like, just, like, yeah, and there wasn't it, no yeah. energy because like they're looking for energy, they're looking for like you're doing the right things because you're gonna if you're gonna be performing like you gotta have that like you gotta be eccentric, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be out there, you gotta fly on like, the song in the background, yeah, yeah, exactly, you gotta feel your own fucking music, yeah. Yeah, and if Big you can't facts. do it without it, you know you can do it with it. So, I mean, yeah, you gotta start there. Yeah, you gotta start without it. So, do you have a process for making your music? What's the process look like? So, big bowl of cereal <laughs> beforehand, maybe. Big bowl of cereal, you know, like MGK, <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but usually, I write music when I a lot of my music because it is. Um, sad a lot of it i'm not gonna lie a lot of it's sad i i do enjoy like when i'm feeling down i enjoy like picking up something and just like fucking writing and um that's how i do a lot of my music um so anytime i'm feeling fucking depressed i put it on a page or in my fucking notes yeah and then i go and i fucking record that shit um the other thing is if i'm just like chilling with my friends i'll like freestyle with them we'll be like chilling and we'll just start freestyle and start going off do you record the freestyles i do some of them yeah okay. can we get a cw hip-hop freestyle later yeah, you want a freestyle? <laughs> I could if y'all want. Hey, oh, shit, I, okay. okay. We'll okay. see if we can pull, pull a beat up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so who is Fairy Ods, Odsonen? Yeah, Fairy Odsonen. Okay, um, they feature on some of your songs like Basic Bitch, uh, which released March 26th, and I, or 2019, and I'm Iconic, which was April 4th, 2019. He is actually from Switzerland. Switzerland, oh, okay. He's okay. From Switzerland, um, and a lot hard, of to be honest. yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's talented. Yeah. He is very That's talented. I've been trying to get him to release more music recently. You got um, to. I think he also changed his name now. I think he's like six one nine black or something. Okay. Or something like that. Um, okay. I'm not hundred percent sure, but um, yeah, he's from Switzerland, and he just hit me up one day, and he was like, "Hey, bro, I'm like, I really like your music. Like, let's make something." And at this point, I I'd only worked with like one or two people, so I was like. Eh. What's it gonna hurt? Sure. Yeah, right. I worked with him. Exactly. And it, and it smacked. And, and I remember for Basic Pitch, Basic Pitch was like a really good song. Everyone I ended up showing that song to loved it. Yes. And like everyone gave me really good feedback on that. But um, when I recorded that song, it was just kind of like, he was like, hey, send me this. And I was like, I'll to like run out the door. And he was like, no, no, just send it real quick. And I was like, okay, whatever. So I like sat there, I recorded one take, and I sent it. And I was like, it's gonna sound like shit. It's fine. And I sent it. And then he sent it back to me. 
three days the full version. And I'm like, this shit goes hard. <laughs> I'm like, this is actually good. I was yeah, not no, expecting it was, this. It is super duper good. And it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. Somebody from Switzerland, you know, it, I mean, I could, it could happen anywhere. You know, we never yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, and the accent, the accent makes it sound like Suicide Boys when he's rapping. So, like, I'm, it's good. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's versatile when he wants to be. Fuck yeah. Of course, Barry's coming back. Um, your last song in 2019 is the way or the way I am, uh, featuring MDG Viper, which you talked about before. Very well received on your SoundCloud, like 10k plays. What inspired the song? So with that song, it was actually um, we just got in the studio and did it. There wasn't that much. I looked at my notes a little bit, kind of but it was mostly in the moment. It was uh, it was us on a microphone. It was us going back and forth and. And we did our own, we just went back and forth, we did our first tracks, we did our verses, we did our ad-libs, and then we just kept vibing off each other, so it turned yeah. out pretty well. Were it's you nice writing, writing or freestyling, I guess? Uh, half of it was a freestyle. I used I used about, like, one or two verses that I that I had pre-written, okay. that I had from, I just wrote them, out, wrote them down earlier. Sometimes I'll think of something, yeah. even if I don't have a beat, I'll just think of something in a flow, and like something that sounds really tight, and I'll just fucking keep it in my notes. And I might use it later. Oh, you know, that's good for like that situation where it's like I might not have beat, but at some point you have beat. At some point I have beat, and I'm like, I need something. Yeah. Exactly. I think we all kind of do that, to be honest. At least yeah, a little bit. People that I know do it. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a good habit to have. And going off of habits, what's uh, what's one positive daily habit that you have to make sure your day goes good? Positive daily habit. I would have said meditate, but I haven't been meditating as much as I used to. Um, but. I'm gonna say I do try to go to the gym almost every day, if not every other day, and that's pretty much for me. That's um, it centers me. That's what locks I, it in. Yeah, it like locks it in for me where I feel good. Because if I don't, then I, I just start getting like irritated at everyone, and I'm just sort of like leave me alone. I understand that. Yeah, right, like uh, right away in the morning, or is it, like after stuff. I'm more of a morning morning. person. It kind of sets me up for the day. Yeah. Okay. Just chillax. Yeah. Get all my anger out, you know. Because yeah. sometimes you wake, wake up in the morning. Yeah. Sometimes too. you like wake up in the morning. You're just angry. You're like, why am I like? <laughs> why am why I do I here? Have to be awake? Why, why, why do I have to wake up and go to work? <laughs> yeah. yeah right. right. Jesus, because that's the daily struggle right there. Uh, so, so what is it? Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, what does what does a day in the life of blind man look like? Uh, is there kind of a set thing, or is it kind of all over the place? He's got a schedule. He's real planned. He's planned out and everything. You, oh, I got, oh, I got probably, oh, every day. Well, I mean, you got to remember, I'm I'm in my last semester of college right now. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, so you kind of have to be honest. I'm my last semester of college. I'm also working. Um, I'm also like trying to make music, and then I'm also like trying to still have a social life. Like, yeah, I want to. Well, so struggle. everything. Yeah. Uh, sometimes but you have to sacrifice. Sometimes you gotta sacrifice. Um, it helps that I have a lot of friends that are also like in other places, so that I don't really hang out with them until they come into town. So I got during that time when they're not here, I feel like I. That's, it's crazy to that, get your stuff done. That's yeah. That's when I don't have to really feel like I have social obligations to uphold or like. That's nice. Yeah. Or I want to see. I mean, I want to see them, but uh, or I have to <laughs> yeah. see people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I get that. So, but the, that's just. Wait, do we go through the day in the life? He's got a schedule. Oh, yeah, oh, I got a schedule. Okay. So okay. I guess, I guess, um, it's like a, can I get it like a day of the week? Just, uh, you like <laughs> your best day of the week. My best, best day, day of the week. week. Oh, my okay. best day of the week. Tough. From when you wake up to when you go to sleep. I guess. What does um, Wyman man do? <laughs> <laughs> you don't I need wake, to get very specific. Man, now, but I wake like, up, I wake up, I brush my teeth. Um, I sometimes bowl I just cereal. don't. Yeah, bowl <laughs> yeah, cereal. Of sometimes course, of course. I I have to do something and I just like don't eat. So then I like go do whatever I have to and I come back and I'm like, well now I need to go to the gym. Um, and you're starving. And I'm starving. And on top of that, I'm like, well I need pre-workout to work out. So I Oof. down a scoop of pre-workout anyways on an empty stomach. <laughs> At this point, my stomach hates me, um, but it's fine because yeah. I at least still get the energy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's fine. I, I listen to my Scar Lord. I listen to my hard rap and rock and I go to the gym and then I um, I'm big on Chipotle so I always get Chipotle I'm not gonna lie <laughs> I haven't had Chipotle like, ever no? never no we got a Qdoba over here we have Qdoba oh, yeah, yeah it's the closest thing that's what we, we got we got Qdoba a while ago <laughs> it's terrible <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's and the same then, thing. Ah, no, it's not. Don't get me into this. All right, oh, fine, 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 fine. We won't go into it. So you stop at Chipotle. Yeah, I stop at Chipotle. I get my shit, um, and I usually have like a class or something I gotta go to. Um, but obviously, once I'm done with fucking classes, that's when I'm really gonna have a lot more time to release a lot more music and get better at that as well. Not that I'm not working on it now, but more time. Of um, course. Yeah, and then I usually. 
either hang out with a friend at night or make music or go to sleep with my cat. Okay. okay. Or so, video games. It sounds great. Hey, <laughs> or you're running down mid on lead, right? Yeah, I'm running down mid on lead. I'm dying, man. All the time. I'm feeding like you're a feeding like a mother. Oh gosh, that's great. <laughs> so yeah, we we're kind of talking about your earlier projects, uh, your first two albums there, and um, listening to those because I, I had heard your newer songs, the newer tracks that you'd sent into the station. Uh, so I went back to listen to your older albums, and it sounds like you've really kind of started to find your sound around there, experimenting a little bit, but then you really d refined the ones that turned into the sound today. So do you think you've found your sound, or do you think you're still playing with that, looking for it? Yeah, I think um, I think I've definitely found it. Before, I was just kind of like a general branch. I was kind of going everywhere. I, was, I, I always listen to everything, and I'm very wide on what I listen to, and that goes into what I make, but um, I was like going around looking at everything, trying everything, and now just recently, I think, with like these last two, three songs, like, I can rap and I can do, like, something like, what, like, I don't know, like, MGK or Jack Harlow style, yeah. but okay. I've, I've realized that if I put, like, my rock undertones and, like, everything else that I like in it as well, I think it really comes off as the vibe that I listen to the most, and that's just, like, emo, rock, rap, and, like, you know, like, peep vibes, or, like, you know, Kill Station, you know, I like the raw shit, like, we are talking about, so, mm -hmm. yeah. so that's the stuff that I'm kind of thinking I'm going to stick with, not that I won't do other stuff, but... Oh well, yeah, you can always branch out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like think I'm really close to the sound. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, we we talked about your old studio setup. What's the new studio setup look like? What are you rocking nowadays? Um, well, like I said, like I usually record it. bigger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I usually record it with my at my friend's uh, studio in his basement. Um, I don't know off the top of my head exactly what he uses, but he has a pretty dope setup. He has like his giant ass stereos and um, that he shakes the whole fucking house with. <laughs> And um, Just he uses, yeah, he uses he FL Studio. Exactly. Um, My man with FL. Yeah, he got the <laughs> FL set up. He got a hell of plugins for me. Um, so we always be playing around with those. Um, and he's got just like a nice. Um, like the box isolation. I forget what it's called. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, I mean, just nice box. Just a, yeah, uh, kind of like one of those. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yep. yep. And then, like, I don't know the name of the microphone. But okay. he told me he just got a new one. So yeah, I don't he's know still has got an interface now. Where I think it's an interface. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, he, good. He, you definitely need one. Yeah, no, he was telling me the other day. He was like, "Yo, bro, I just got this new mic. You gotta mm. come over and like test it out. It's gonna sound really good." Fuck yeah! Like, uh, I want a mic you got. Maybe it's a too. Sure SM7B because if they got that, that'd be. I'll ask him. You're gonna be crisp on that. You're talking about crisp. You're, you want crisp? That's crisp. Uh, you want, go ahead. Yeah, you uh, so noticing the, the projects, uh, they both came out in 2019, and then there's kind of a gap there uh, until you, you started releasing... took a bit of a break in 2020. Uh, yeah, um, and then you started releasing more 2021, so what happened in between there? Were you just busy with school, or working um, on that sound still? Was it COVID, maybe? It was, it was like a mix of, like, quarantine. Um, one thing about me when I'm recording, I don't like being around people when I'm recording. I like being alone. Um... Okay. So if I have to be around people like quarantining and stuff and all that, um, I usually don't feel like I want to make music just because it's like a very vulnerable. And I don't mind putting it out. I don't mind being vulnerable on track. It's just when I'm recording it, it's a lot more personal. Mm -hmm. Of course. I understand um, that. And during that time, it was like quarantine. It was COVID. It was school at the same time. Um, I was and trying to do with like a lot COVID of was yeah, hell fucking more bitch. Point, yeah. And I was dealing with like a lot of obligations at the time as well. Um, and I was also just going through a lot too, so okay. I kind of, I didn't mean to stop for that long. You're take it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but during that whole time, that's actually when I was actively working on Nightmares. Oh, um, on Nightmares, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, during that time, was, or right after that time, it's when Nightmares, I think, was like pretty much done. Um, I got it mastered pretty well and got out. Um, but yeah. Just a yeah. little break over yeah. there. Going, you know, going right like, from nightmares, though. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like a lot of people had that if they started before. Um, but I also know, too, on the opposite, a lot of people started for COVID. So, I mean, there's kind of a weird mix on it. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it happens. Uh, but definitely, I think the break was good for you. Because the music coming out afterwards, it's hit. Oh, yeah. Appreciate it. So then, uh, after your hiatus, uh, in 2021, you started by posting Nightmares, March 17th, like you said, and uh, I just, I guess I want to know, how, how, did, how did it make you feel when you released a song after such a long break? Uh, did that song, did it make it, did it make you feel, you know, good, empowered, you know, ready? Right, making, making any album, <clears throat> the second I put it out, I felt on top of the world. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, and I don't, and it didn't matter to me that those first two albums that, like, no one was listening to, or, like, the first one no one was listening to, like, it didn't really matter. People did, like, some people that did, but just putting that out there is, like, very therapeutic. And the second I, like, release something and I put it everywhere, 
it just like it, it like hits with me. It makes me feel good. It feels like it weights off my chest. If I go so long without making music, if I go so long without creating something, that's when I start feeling like more anxiety. Yeah, I start feeling the weight on my chest. Exact same, bro. And it sucks, but at the same time, it's good. Yeah. Like it's it, it's gonna keep me pushing because if I don't do it, I'm gonna get like hella fucking depressed. I'm just like, I'm <laughs> yeah. Not, I'm not gonna want to do anything. But after that, you dropped four more songs in 2021, titled Stargazer, August 20th, uh, Better Days. September 16th, Renting Happiness, October 29th, which is my birthday, by the way, so I just thought I'd throw that in there. Uh, and you finished off 2021 with Come Back Around, which is a banger, by the way, uh, on November 24th. So were any of these songs inspired by anything? Maybe what happened in the year before 2020 when you took the break? Yeah, so you said the first one was uh, Nightmares, right? Uh, well, you, you got night. Yeah, you got Nightmares, you got... Uh, uh, Stargazer, you got better days, you yeah, got renting so, happiness, uh, <clears throat> come back around. Yeah, so Stargazer um, was actually the song I wrote after um, my brother ended up passing away. Um, and as with everything that makes me feel some form of emotion, I put it in the song. And I put it on my paper in my notes. Um, and I actually sat on that for a while. I wrote that actually immediately after because I wasn't sure how to process it. And um, I didn't actually record it or put it out until. I want to say like a month or two after the fact. So I sat on it for a while. Um, as far as like um, renting happiness, um, that was a very just sort of like spitting on the track sort of um, from my heart, sort of like how um, someone feels when like you see someone that like you love in like a different situation and like sort of what you get out of that. Um, Cause there's not much emotion that you can feel like you can feel everything you want but that feeling of like left behind this i guess so okay. that track um as far as come back around it's kind of like so on the same thing but it's more around like people not being in your life anymore and, like you kind of want them there and like you have these moments like where you're kind of like man i wish this person was here or like this person was here this person was still around and like they're not there and like it's really sad but at the same time like we're human cherishing every moment honestly with that sort of like stuck with me as well so limited time with that song and just remembering like everything's temporary yeah you gotta, you gotta I think moments, you, know? you capture that very well in that song uh, that's one of my favorites for me is come back around I play that one in my own playlist just as it was other yeah. music yeah I love that song which of those five songs was your favorite to make let me go with come back around I think his Come Back Around was the only track um, that I actually got to like belt out on and like and I think I relate it a lot to because I think at that point I started listening to a decent amount of like Kenny Hoopla you know who that is? No, you had mentioned him but yeah. He, like, it's from U uh, he went to UWM and he's growing pretty oh. big now he just okay. played a show in Milwaukee he's like okay. touring around the UK now I think but um, he, he like is someone who I was listening to recently around that song as well and he would like belt out with like these rock um, but he's mostly rock but he has some like rap undertones a little bit and stuff you yeah know? like you know but he's a pretty top artist and i sort of wanted to do something since i was listening to swayco and all these other people where i was like i want to like belt out like with the rock undertones as well mm -hmm. like since i'm like derived from rock and my roots are in rock <laughs> so i was like this is definitely something i should do and i should mix that with rap so i put rap on that as well and yeah yeah that's the song yeah okay. i like the, the mixing of genres a lot like, yeah no I, I definitely fuck with it and I, i'm probably gonna keep doing it definitely Hell yeah, like you were saying before I keep doing that. a lot of people are kind of getting the same rhythm same songs all kind of sounds like but like with you mixing that it's gonna be it's changing fusion. it up and yeah it's it's right. gonna take it a different keep direction. people around for sure now your new song uh devil girl you just uh released that it's a great song um play on the live dj it it is a great song so what kind of made you come about with that song what, what inspired it who hurt you <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think we talked about it earlier on the um, live DJ um, a little bit, um, or maybe earlier before, I don't remember. It might have been before, I don't, it might have been before, I don't remember. But earlier in the night we talked about it a little bit, um, and it was just that feeling that like I feel like a lot of people get, because everyone goes through like relationships and friendships and like people, and, and like people betraying you. and. Um, I think that song itself was like made it like a really and, and I sat on that for a while and it wasn't until I had that chorus forever and it wasn't mm. until later on I added the verses. Nice. Okay. And um and I think that track in itself I was going through like a lot 
and and everything that I write is usually written like a while before it's released. So like okay. the one thing I hate is when people come up to me after I release something, they're like, "Hey, bro, are you okay? Like, hey, are, yeah. are you oh, alright?" Right? And gosh. I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, dude. I wrote that shit like a year ago. Uh, yeah, like fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> like I, I, like thanks, but no. <laughs> late but yeah, yeah, well, late, right, right, late to the party. Yeah, but, exactly. but, That's but, so yeah. Um, I, I just wanted everyone. I think like I like a lot of music. Um, like, like a lot of stuff I've listened to. Like, go to hell. Like, she cheated. All this stuff. Like, it's all based around like betrayal. And like betrayal is like one of like the toughest things I think like someone can sort of like mm. feel because like it, it's you. You still have love for the person, like, but you the same time it's torn to shreds and there's nowhere for you to really go with that and i think everyone like can or has or will experience that at some point in some way shape or form so that song in itself was an embodiment of that good answer yeah is this a single to a new project possibly you know it wasn't originally a whole project um since i've been just trying to grow um i've been trying to release single after single okay and um that's mostly just because i can market it easier I guess and just sort of like vibe off and make TikToks make <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's make I stuff, understand. you know and I can do it more often whereas an album I could work, sit and work on it for like months or like a year or two and like I'll, re I'll release some like tracks that are good but if you don't know me you don't know my name you're not gonna sit there and listen to me for 45 minutes I mean that's that is that's true I'd say that's fair and definitely the music attention economy is mm -hmm. quick what's new yep. what's next I don't like Oh, your album was twelve songs long, but it came out two weeks ago, dude. What's in the, what, where's the next stuff? Like yeah, you're always kind of pushing exactly. that, that new new experience. So mm -hmm. having uh, the singles, yeah, I think you're gonna be able to promote much easier with them. hundred percent. So what do you want the listener to take away from your music? I guess anything they want, really. But more than anything, the reason I did it initially was because I had like the reason I. Like, so I believe it's because he talked about like that feeling like of aloneness when you're like going through life, um, and I think like when you're when you're listening to my music, it has like undertones of that because a lot of it's sad, um, and like I got my hype rap songs, which like I want you to vibe to, but um, the sad ones really hit home where it goes like I get what you're feeling, and yeah. like you're not alone, and like you can say you can feel the same feeling as me, and you can you can like feel it however you want, but like we're still on the same page even if you feel alone, and, like you know. And that's yeah. why that's why I tied so hard to some artists is like they really put that message out there and they really like use that for their fan base and like gaining loyal people. So if you if your fans don't feel with you, then they're not gonna fuck with you on like that level. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, you definitely gotta have that emotion, that that connection. Yeah. Um, something they can relate to, like you said. Uh, now we're gonna get into the social media deep dive. Okay. Deep dive. He says, oh, oh man. man. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm scared. So on Hope your you didn't hide anything. On your Instagram. <laughs> oh, you can't hide anything. <laughs> <laughs> on your Instagram, as of right now, you got 3.7K followers, uh, 65 posts. And so, and you said, you, you mentioned before, you do archive and delete your posts quite a bit. Um, at least, on, well, on SoundCloud, I do. If I do you do that on Instagram up. as well? Instagram, I go through periods where I clean up. Mostly because I'm trying to fit a certain niche or um, trying to get a certain aesthetic for my page. Um, okay. Quite recently, I've been only trying to put out like quality content um, and stuff that looks good, but at the same time, I'm trying to keep up with the algorithms. And I'm trying to mm -hmm. uh, yeah, of uh, course. post often enough, which is very hard. But um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trying to do it with only quality content, very yeah. hard. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I'm sure you guys know that. <laughs> I know it all too well. Uh, the first post on your Instagram was posted to April 3rd, 2015, and it's the picture that I assumed of you, which it is of you, you told me this already, in the Middle East riding a camel named Martha. Now, did you actually, as you captioned, as your caption says, conquer the wild Middle East with your good friend Martha? I mean, I went sandboarding, so does that count? I would say that counts. I guess yeah. that counts. Like, like you're on top of the sand dune, you're looking out over the Middle East, you're sandboarding. I've never tried sand. I've been snowboarding, but sandboarding sounds pretty dope. <laughs> it's, it's just a bitch to get up the dune, but... I believe that. But it's less <laughs> cold. Up sand. Le less cold, more heat, more sweat. More like sand that, in places yeah. you don't want. Oh, I guess. Yeah, sure. That's you one thing I probably would like, fell. actually. Yeah. I fell. Ooh. You did. How many times? At least twice. At least twice. Did you get any video footage of you conquering it, though? Have you... Uh, snowboarding I have a single picture uh, that someone took of me laying on the ground after I fell. <laughs> and I recently found documentation. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, and was is this ap like actually your first ever post on Instagram? No. Okay. No, no. I, I I feel like everyone has their cringy posts they posted from middle school <laughs> and high school and 
etc. Except for those people that made a new Instagram account. Yeah, were too I did not. I oh, you actually reused the one you. Yeah, I just years. deleted and I recycled and I kept my followers. I don't yeah, really. Exactly. I don't want to go through the trouble. Hey, that's a good point. Uh, and then I also see a lot of pictures. Well, I think I was like one or two of them with you and your cat. Uh, and I think you already mentioned his name is Zeus. How did how did you get Zeus? How, what's the story of Zeus? Um, Zeus I got from the Humane Society oh, um, nice. during quarantine. He was seven months when I got him. Nice. Uh, had to pay ninety five dollars as opposed to other cats because he was so young. Still don't understand that. Just a way to make money, I'm sure. I guess. But, yeah. yeah um, but <laughs> not complaining. He's a great cat. Um, very cute. Um, kind of an asshole, attacking sometimes. I think that's cats sometimes. It that's is just, just cats, cats in general. They get that exactly. mood, exactly. But yeah, he um, he is like one year and like four months now. So um, I got him from the Humane Society during quarantine. Awesome. Um, I was living with three cats at the time actually. Okay. And he was not playing well, so he had to stay in a separate room. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he was the youngest too. They were like seven, and he was like not even one, and he was full on bull tackling them. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, Bro. maybe they were just playing with him for the back at all. No, no. 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 <laughs> a lot of hissing. They're like, I don't want to be here. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, hopefully Zeus uh, comes back around and you know, okay, gets come back older around. and. <laughs> yeah. They tame, they tame out after a while. Like, yeah, I had <laughs> that same issue. He was all, my my cat Roni was all over the place, literally nonstop. Yeah, he's, more, he's a little more tame Roni now, but he's still got his high energy. The high energy is kind of cute, though. It's cute. Honest. No, I yeah. like it. I like it. So on your SoundCloud, you have four hundred and fifty followers and twenty nine tracks. Is this where, this is where you started posting music? Right. That is where I first started yeah. posting music. Do you ever get pulled into the stereotype of being a SoundCloud rapper? <sighs> so great, you ask me that every. <laughs> all right, so I meet so many people, and the first time they figure out that I make music, they look at me and they go, oh, SoundCloud rapper, mm. every time. And I show my music. And they're like, this is actually really good. Oh, and Jesus I'm like, Christ. I'm like, thanks. Every Did you not that, think that, it was going to be good? And they're like, no, because everyone that shows me, and, and that's my other pet peeve, I was showing you that TikTok I made. Or it was like, people who like, don't make music or like, aren't good at music kind of like ruin it for everyone else who's trying to start out because no one wants to get into local music. Exactly. Nobody and like, wants to listen and to like, tape and like, because this other guy's tape sucks. Yeah, and like, fuck you for not listening to local music and supporting local artists, but also I understand that there's a lot of, it's oversaturated. There's a lot of yeah. shit out there yeah. that's not good and I've heard it. Like, it's mm -hmm. not, like, mm -hmm. I get it, but you gotta give everyone. But a there's chance. surprisingly a lot of good artists out there. Too. Oh, there there's is. So Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There's so many people that I've found or I worked with or I have been in contact with where it's like makes a fire, and mm -hmm. and they're and not breaking through the sound. That's the only problem. Like, yeah, and they're just not breaking through the sound, like getting out with marketing and stuff. And and that's the reality. It's like if you're not, man. yeah, you can sound, you can be the best fucking rapper in the game. You can be better than Logic, Facts. but if you, you don't got marketing, seen, you're not going fucking anywhere. Preach it, dude. Exactly. All facts. Yeah, yeah, artists around someone here. understands. Yeah, right. artists around here. It's marketing <laughs> is one of the hardest things, and they're the best artists I've ever heard. But Gosh, nobody man. hears them. Nobody like, knows who they are. Exactly. It's 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 so true. Uh, and then also you get really good engagement on most of your songs on SoundCloud. Do you have like a community and a fan base? Do you have like a like a set fan base that you? You call uh, anything, yeah, like... Oh, do you have a, like, yeah, do you have a name, name for him, too, I guess? Um, no. I would like one, but... Why is <laughs> Yeah, honestly, at this point, I'll start, like, a Reddit group. We'll get it going, but... Oh, a Reddit group. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. But, um, yeah, no, I, um... So I work a lot with, like, uh, Repost Exchange sometimes, okay. um, where it is I'll basically listen to other artists who are smaller, and I'll give them feedback, and in exchange, um, I get credits for other artists to listen to my songs and give me feedback. And okay. they kind of help out with telling me what to get better with and um, giving me like a rating on the song. Um, and in exchange, the other person gets to also put their music out. What's that, what's that program ca called? Repost, Repost Exchange. It's, oh, it's called Repost, Repost Exchange. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty tight. Okay. I think it's based out of UK. I'm okay. Check that out. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. I, I guess I've never heard of that before. I think one of the artists that we had, uh, Ham, he, he had tried that once, I think, at Did one he? point. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't know what it was called, but I'll have to check that out definitely. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and then on your Facebook, you have 4.5k followers, and you mostly just put us stuff out about your music. But uh, August 6, 2019, you posted album soon. Dot dot dot, and then that was the year you took a complete year off. You shit the bed, and you didn't post any music. <laughs> I the, wasn't the not world working. Shit the, bed. the world is <laughs> not okay. That's, that's yeah, true. It's not you my fault. The world shit the bed. Don't put that It's not my fault. The same exact thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it, it, it was <laughs> just a tough time for all of us. About you. It was, um, yeah, no, it was a tough time for all of us. I was, um, I was planning on, right before then was 
before I made the decision that I was just going to do singles, and it was mm. before I had the mentality and I learned that like nobody's going to listen to you if you release whole albums, they don't know who you are. Um, so right after I did that, and after my hiatus, I was like, singles. Like, so did you have an album in the works? Did you say, and then you like scrapped I had, it? Like I had like I have a lot in the vault. Oh, so okay. it's sometimes okay. it's I work on something, I finish it, I record all of it. It sounds aight, and I'm like, this is just aight. You got a rough what's number. A, of I was like, gonna say, yeah. what's an estimate about how what many how vault? many things you got in the vault? Even like if it's unfinished, so you're doing like twenty, if it's unfinished, fifty, hundred. Uh, I'd say around like at least fifty, probably. Oh, okay, okay. okay. probably around Hell like fifty. Yeah. So unfinished that's stuff. Good, yeah, that's a good um, good cushion there. Yeah, you got yeah, like definitely. unfinished stuff. I mean, and most of it's stuff where I'm like, I'm probably not gonna release this. But yeah. at the same time, sometimes I'll remember stuff from those and I'll use it in a new song. Or right, like, good inspiration. Yeah, for and, and it'll work better on something else. So like, it's it's good to have the ball. You know. Mm -hmm. Of course, I, I know. Uh, Prism, you had that with a song, completely different song, and then oh yeah, it was so fun. One. Yeah. Now I've never used Deezer before. I'm saying that. I don't right? know if I've ever heard that either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've never used it before. I've heard of it before. I've just never used it. Um, it's just another streaming platform. Is all it really is. Um, like another, I would I would I guess assume I would just name it the title, just because title is one that's not normally used as well in that category. And, right? Yeah, it's kind of like that. You know, it's another Spotify kind of Pandora type thing as well. Um, you had one song that caught my eye in your Deezer, because I mean I didn't know what it was, and I was just kind of looking through your thing. And your discography, and it was called No Flex by Rossi and T Bone, <laughs> featuring YMN Remix. And that was released September 29, 2019. Now, the first question I have is who is Rossi? Who's T Bone? And another question is how does this song come about? And what's the remix of? Because it was an interesting song. That's all I gotta say. It was a very interesting song. Man, I was not expecting you to ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> he goes deeper. <laughs> I find things. Um, uh, so, Rossi was just like. Um, uh, I think I like heard of him in high school or something. He was just kind of, kind of like some like young gravy-ish like kind of okay. gravy rapper or whatever. And, like everyone was just kind of like raging about him at that high school or whatever. And they're just like, yeah, Rossi, you know, the stuff. And like, some of it's like funny or whatever, but you know, it's I. Right. Um, then he just hit me up one day. He was like, oh, bro, like, let's make a track. And I was like, all right, whatever. I sent him the vocals. I didn't even know like what their vocals were gonna be or anything. You didn't hear the song and, at all or anything? Not, not until it was done. Oh. Oh really? Wait, how did you put your vocals on it then? If you didn't have like the beat, I, I had the beat. Oh, I just had the beat. Okay, okay, never mind. Never mind. I vocals. thought they had essentially like an open. Yeah, no, okay. maybe I had like thirty seconds of their vocals, but not much. Like okay. I didn't, like I didn't. Um, so I just like recorded something. I sent it to him, and yeah, it was just kind of like a fuck it. I'm gonna do this. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm gonna just like make something for fun, just do it or whatever. It wasn't definitely not like one of my best stuff at all, but like. <laughs> it was like I said, interesting song. It's a <laughs> step on the um, way. But I definitely, I definitely wanted to know because it was like the only one that I, the only feature you had that like caught my eye. Where it was like, first of all, the cover art really different. Secondly, the the name of the uh, the people with, that are on the song kind of different. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to know, uh, and it was interesting again to say the least. Uh, Is it only on Deezer? I think so. Yeah, okay, I didn't I see it anywhere else. I didn't. It I thought it. I thought it was on Spotify as well. I don't even go on Deezer. Maybe I didn't look hard enough. It might on Spotify. be. Might be for, I don't. I don't want people to find it. <laughs> <laughs> Just take your take your tag off of I it. I might. Nah, dude. You gotta have. You gotta have that history. You know what I mean? People look for back on you. Yes, I, mean, no I mean, yeah. I usually use SoundCloud for history, but. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I we've never talked about Deezer. That was for, like you yeah. went deep into. The yeah, no, like, I saw the link and I was like, oh, I'll check it out. Maybe he posted something different on his Deezer, and I mean, I found something different on the Deezer, I guess you know. Um, so where can we expect YMN in the future? What are some things you want to do? You got some short-term goals, maybe some long-term goals. What's the next moves, song project? What are you working on right now? Um, I actually got a song I've been working on right now that uh, I actually finished. What's the name? Um, no name. Actually. The name is no name? Is no, no, there's oh, actually I thought no he was trying name to pull for it. Sly one on me. No, man. no, not with those titles. But <laughs> the, um, I don't think I came up with an official name for it. Okay. Um, it's kind of like, I don't really know how to describe it. I showed it to like one of my producers, and he was like, dude, I don't even know what to classify this, but it's good. Like, you should okay. do it. Okay. New from what and you've done? Yeah, a little okay. bit. Um, it's okay. mostly like an acoustic beat. Mm. Um, but it's very okay. simple. Um, <coughs> I guess we'll see. Okay. You know. Okay. Any idea on drop? Or yeah. It's in the works. Um, it is in the works. It is okay. fully. <clears throat> I just need to record it. It's fully okay. Written. All right. Okay. Right. okay. 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 And we know you can do that in one take. Yeah. yeah exactly. 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 Uh, so what kind of sound or emotion should we be expecting for the next project or the next song? 
Um, I guess you did just say acoustic for your next song. It is acoustic, so it's more of a Russ, but like okay, more. It's like Russ Black Bear and like Boogie. Mm, and and Boogie. Wow. Wait, Russ you Black. put Boogie with Russ and okay, interesting. Okay, and I only say Boogie because Boogie has the whole like, um, you know, like what's that song called? Still thinking about you. Stuff like that, okay, just like piano okay. stuff and yeah, stuff like yeah, yeah. that. So from an acoustic standpoint, where he does, does stuff like that, kind of plays into that. Got you. Okay, okay, that makes sense. All right. If you could choose any artist to feature on a song of yours, who do you for pick? For free. For free, yes. Who would it be? Alive. Yeah, I'm gonna go alive. <laughs> we'll, maybe we'll make this happen for you. We'll pull some. Free. Oh, you're gonna make this happen for you. All right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with right now. I would love to work with Kid Lil. Ooh, okay. Ooh, that's I a good answer. To working together, yeah, so. that that'd be a heartbreak album Maybe for here, the century. Hear right a little there. bit about Juice and and Kid Leroy was also instrumental in Come Back Around and Double Girl a little bit too. So okay, Ooh. I think if you okay. listen to like his other album, um, Fuck Love Over You, there's a lot of undertones in that too. But I listened to that album like a shit ton before I wrote those. Got you. <laughs> so that you pulled inspiration for that. I did pull inspiration gotcha. for that. Um, so what is your dream venue to perform at in the future? I mean, I'd ultimately probably be like Soldier Field and uh, something like that. Something big. Worst, 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 stadium, something big. I want to do like a stadium, you know? Well, yeah. that's the plan, you know? Yeah, right, yeah. But, so but if, you t if you're asking me my dream stadium, yeah, it's like a, you know, fucking Fizzerb or like Soldier Field or something. I guess like, I know where Soldier Field is. Where's that at? Chicago. Chicago. Oh, Chicago. Yeah, like a Chicago okay. sold out venue or gotcha. like something like that. Um, something really big. You know, obviously. Well, of course. Oh, well, yeah, of course, of course. But Most people say Madison Square Garden. Yeah, Madison Square Garden's, Garden's not bad. Square. I would do that too. Mm -hmm. um, one question here I got from the uh, the chat here, uh, and it kind of ties into the future here. But what is your image of success in music? Like, what would you Good say? Good question, Domino yeah. the Dragon. Good question. So, um, independent businesses are like really big, just like local independent businesses. Um, and what I learned a lot working with people who do their own like photography, who do their own like videography, everything like. Because everything's a fucking business in this business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, Facts. Um, is that like being able to get to a point where you can like not even make a lot of money, but just sort of break even on your business. Live on. Like yeah, and like exactly. the money you use. Um, comfortably. And be able, yeah, comfortably. Or just the first year you come out positive. That's a that's big. A huge, that's a huge marker. Facts. Like that's a huge like thing everyone like strives to hit. My cousin who does photography, he just hit that marker and he's opened his own business. Like hell yeah. This, like, Proud of him, like you know, like local businesses. That's where it's at. And Fuck yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Couldn't that's probably myself. the biggest thing for me. If uh, if it wasn't just doing music, what kind of business within the music industry would you maybe be interested in? <sighs> within the music industry, but not making music. Yeah, we'll say like you're not like specifically on maybe. like making the music itself. Like what other side part of this? Um, let's see. probably like. Like a show curator, It'd be pretty cool. Okay. Like promoter. Um, yeah, like a promoter or something. We get to work with a lot of like a lot of connections. Um, yeah. Probably meet a lot of cool people through that. Um, and like with this business, connections are everything. So facts. Definitely. If it's, if it's a job Who where I can have a lot of connections, I'll definitely. do it. Definitely. Facts. Um. Oh yeah. So somebody else in the chat actually just. Uh, asked a question. Uh, who did you grow up listening to? I guess, I don't think you named any specific bands, but you said rock rock when we were talking about it. Kind of saying like some early 2000s. Yeah, early 2000s. Um, I was listening to a lot of like Pierce the Veil. Oh, uh, you did? Uh, My Chemical that. Romance. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, metal. I listened to like Beartooth. I listened to like Panic Slipknot? at the Disco. Slipknot. My brother was really big on Slipknot. Uh, I like some of Slipknot as well. Um, but when people say Slipknot, I don't think of the band. I think of the song by X and Kill Station. Off ah, okay, okay, okay. Members only. Great Got albums. You. Um, but I grew up on a lot of rock music like that, Linkin Park, um, all that really. Um, and then I moved on into X, Ski Mask, Lil Peep, Trippy Red, um, Juice World, Wi Fi's Funeral, all that. I still love that name. Wi Fi's, Wi -Fi's Funeral. Funeral. It's a great fucking name. Like, it's, it just sticks so with you. Good. It just sticks with yeah. you. It's like, why? Yeah, I would never why is that name that. so good, but yet it's like so weird? <laughs> You pick it apart, it's like, why? You're here, what? and you're just who's like, who thought of this? Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I totally agree. So as we approach the end of the show, I have one more important question to ask. And it is, why should people care about YNN? Because I'm genuine. And I don't think you find that a lot in any industry or 
any walk of life, really. Mm -hmm. I think when somebody's genuine about something and they have the authenticity for like their own emotions, and, they, and they're really like at a place where they can put it out and feel vulnerable with it, and benefit from them. Not only like benefiting monetary wise, but like I benefit on like a spiritual and emotional level. When I of go course. Yeah. So like it's more for me than it is for someone else just doing it for money. Okay. Something like that. It, and, and in all honesty, if five hundred thousand people listen to my music and I don't get paid a penny, like that's fine. Yeah. Like I, I'm down I get for that. that. Like I just want the listeners. Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I totally get that. If somebody actually listened to what you're putting effort and in, work into. Yeah, yeah, dude, and like I'm putting effort into it. I'm not just slapping anything on a track and putting it out and saying, hey, yeah, I rap or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I'm putting work and like effort and like I'm putting my actual shit into it. Like I'm not sitting there and just thinking about what I can write. I'm hurting in the moment and I'm fucking like putting it to favor. So it's pretty raw. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I guess going a little bit off the questions here, just because I've I've just been thinking about it this whole time. You got a scar on your on your on your brother? How'd you get that scar? <laughs> You're out in me over here. <laughs> These are questions that people ask all the time when they meet me, and then I like never tell them. Oh, uh, <laughs> CW but, pop exclusive. Yeah, I guess so. Nice. Um, so that's actually as far as well. I actually don't remember it that much because I was so young. Okay. But what I am told, and the the very slight memory I have of it, is I believe I was so young I was about like the table length almost and I just ran to the table I ran the corner Ooh. on my like yeah on my eyebrow or whatever and it was Damn, bleeding that yep, hurt. and it was bleeding so you gotta put like a bandage there and then we took the bandage off Ooh. and there's no more hair I used to so, have a scar here for that exact same reason yeah, yeah a lot of people do actually I see I see them That's like as I've been growing up and um I don't think you can see it like might as well help myself some more else like this one okay is that, that looks like a burn uh, or, it's a type of burn. Okay. Um, I actually have a lot of scars. Um, hey, even lived if you don't have AIDS. I know, exactly, I know. Exactly. Um, this is actually from when I was a baby. And okay. what I am told, don't, don't hold me to this because I, I didn't think I was as dumb of a baby, but I apparently stuck my hand into a vacuum cleaner that was on. Oh. I crawled over to it and I stuck my hand into it. Yikes. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, but well, I, was I was adventurous. I was adventurous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I used to have I used to have these two big ones over here too. Okay. I don't know. You can, they're kind of faded now. You can't see them as much, but that's from like hot coffee. Oh. Oh gosh! Yeah. Did you sue McDonald's for that? It was actually at the hospital. That's the you should have sued the hospital. Was, there a, was yeah. there a warning on the cup? If you if there wasn't, you you got no, this. You're right. Hey, you were at the right place, Donnie. Like, I was at the right place. Yeah. It took me right <laughs> in. Put the cold towels down. I was like. Facts. Fine, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right. They'll help me in a second, yeah. I think. <laughs> I can just imagine that. You, you're in the other room drinking your coffee. You have to hit the button a bunch of times, and the nurse comes over and they're like, what happened? What happened? Like Fucking... Exactly. Right? Oh, man. So here we come to the end. Uh, it was dope having you here. You fucking loved it. Oh, yeah, man. I uh, loved it. How would you rate this interview from 1 to 10? 1 to 10? I, you did your research, man, so, like... That makes it way more interesting when I hear the questions. I'm gonna go with a nine, you know. Okay. Go with that. a nine. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I like think it when people only... don't just say ten right away. Yeah. No, yeah. I think I think the I would only give a ten if like it was given by someone I really really wanted to give it to me. Like, not that I okay. don't like you guys, but like say yeah, like, yeah. like Adam Twenty Two or something, I understand. like or someone like really big, then I'd be like, yeah, this is a great ass interview. But also if they ask better <laughs> yeah, questions, course, so course. don't get me wrong, y'all ask like amazing fucking questions, Thank and like you. and like you did your research, so. You know, I'd rather have that than some of those basic that. ones. Yeah, yeah, I do yeah. my I do my best, man. Uh, I think I think that's the one thing I took away from school was like making interviews or like essays and stuff like that. I think that's the one thing I ever took away from school. So <laughs> I use it the best I can. Eight off. Uh, and would you recommend any other artists come get inter interviewed by us? Any local artists get interviewed by? You? Just yeah. What, would you recommend artists? Or? Well, you don't, have to, you don't have to recommend like a specific artist, but like, would you recommend? Oh, other would artists? I recommend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally okay. would. No, this is fun as hell. <laughs> like, 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 I'm, I'm trying to think. You're like, oh, I'm gonna name someone. No, 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 no. You're no, like, gonna be dropping names. Yeah. I was like really worried. I was like, oh man, he don't want to recommend. But you can't. Uh, I was gonna say, <laughs> damn, you no, really like, gotta think about this I'm right like, now. No, I was no, like, no, shit. I totally, I totally recommend. I fucked up. Like, no, it's definitely, definitely a good time. I fuck with all you. Got like great people. You fuck with you too, man. Uh, so this is where this is where you can go ahead and you can do the shout outs if you want. Uh, you can promote anything you want, talk about anything you want, give shout outs, ask us questions, take as much time as you want to your microphone, yeah, your show right, right now. Shit, y'all didn't tell me this part. No, um, I didn't tell you shit, did I? I guess not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my boy Essence, 
one of the best producers in the game. Um, shout out to my other producer, Capricio. He's also amazing at mixing. Hit him up if you haven't. Um, he'll get you like right with like some good sounds if you're trying to go for something close to my noise as well. Um, otherwise, he's also very versatile, like rock music and acoustics as well. Um, otherwise, follow me at Instagram on uh, at ymn.mke. Um, otherwise, thanks for having me, and it's been a blast. Yeah, Fuck appreciate yeah. you making the drive over. This has been a great interview. Oh, yeah. yeah, glad you're able to make it. And I mean, you can find me on Instagram right away, Garky Gaines, G A R K E G A I N Z. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at CW Hip Hop. Follow me at Facebook, Instagram, uh, BVNC95. Garky. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> <Stole it> from <laughs> I got him. Prism. Where can Melissa <laughs> find you at? You can find me on Instagram and Facebook uh, at Prism Rap, P R I Z M R A P. And yeah. Yeah, and then also just letting the listener know we do have yeah. another interview coming up February 23rd. SG the first, possibly have another one next week with Lil Gut. Yes, sir. Uh, so you guys can check that out. Uh, but yes, appreciate you coming, man. We had a great interview. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you uh, joining <laughs> the awesome. Patreon to get on the yep. station. Love all your music. It fits right in with everybody else. Okay, there, so. it, man. I can't wait to see what's next. Yeah, oh, yeah. honestly, yeah. Send it to you. Pay you better be sending right it to oh, us, yeah. goddamn. You better tell us about it, right? It raises right? like out, out the dog. Fresh, <laughs> out fresh, the dog. Fresh, fresh out, out the, the dog. dog. I like that. Out the, I said fresh out the, out door, the dog. Ooh, that could be like a mixer tag. Fresh <laughs> out the dog. Ooh. Ooh, hey, that kind of sounds. I gotta write that guy down. Hey, you go back to that. Yeah, I'm gonna put a TM on that. We're gonna put that out of the box. Alright, well, guys. it's been a great interview. Hopefully, the listener, you guys enjoyed as well. Learned um, a lot about it. You know, make sure you guys, you guys yeah. can also go go listen to all of our past interviews and podcasts on Spotify and SoundCloud. Uh, you guys can also check out, you know, the Instagram lives. Those are always uh, posted from past interviews and uh, podcasts. You guys can check those out. Otherwise, really hope you guys enjoyed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Appreciate you. Peace. 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 Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>